Hey, what's up guys? So we got some balance changes here. Before we dive into these, um, just wanted to say if you enjoy these kind of videos and stuff, be sure to drop a like on these kind of videos. I'll make sure I do them. These ones I do pretty frequently because I like covering changes to units. It's kind of like my niche, my thing. Um, also, if you're new here, consider hitting that sub button if you're looking for some more Epic 7 content to watch. And before we dive in, just wanted to give a big thanks to my buddy Mace and Netherworld Guardian, the two newest members on my YouTube channel, taking the leap to help support me in doing this content creation full-time thing. Um, Mace also does YouTube as well. He's one of my moderators on my uh, Discord, and he runs like the guild that I started on my alt. He's one of the, uh, I guess, quote-unquote council members. I don't know. They all kind of like run the guild as coercive team instead of there being a guild leader as far as I know but um he's really awesome he started a YouTube channel so I'm gonna drop a link to his YouTube channel down in the description if you're looking for some more content creators to watch that are really knowledgeable and skill based definitely uh go check him out drop him a sub I'd appreciate it and with that being said let's get into this video talk about some dev notes all right so right away we see we got Silverblade Araminta Kisei Ravi, Ken, Shadow Rose, Kitty, Clarissa, General Purgus, Celeste, and they modified an equipment for Charles. Initially, when I saw this, I thought they were going to nerf his equipment. I was like, oh, well, they're going to nerf Charles. Sick. That's not the case. So let's go down. We'll take a look at Silverblade Airmen the first. Um, originally, she had three burns on her, her uh, S3 here. It made her pretty uh, oppressive. Um, it was 50% chance to do three burns, I think. It's been so long, I barely remember. Um, but they gave her that burn back in the form of her, I think this is her S2. So if she hits a burn, she has another chance to burn. Um, they added an unhealable on of her meteor, and that's pretty much it. And her S3 generates more souls. They also re-increased how much CR she was gaining on her... S2 when she hits a burn. This is where it was originally and they nerfed it down to here and they buffed it back up to here. Um, so do I think she's back? I, I never think she was gone. Like she was a pretty good unit. Um, I started using her kind of recently and I like her. She's a good unit. She's a unit that I really wanted way back then but I think this definitely like she's just better. Like she's gonna be better on your team. Unhealable is a really nice debuff. But typically what you're using her for, you're using her for the stun. And you're going to kill stuff. Unhealable is not going to do too much for you. Um, it could kind of a kind of cuck a Rowana, I suppose. Because she does the dual attack. After the, the, the extra attack after her S1. So, I mean, that could kind of counter Rowana. But I don't think this is going to make too much of an impact. Uh, getting more souls is nice. I think this is like one of the better things. You know, a chance to burn on an AoE. Another burn. This is this this part is really nice. And we'll uh you'll you'll notice a lot a big difference in this compared to this. I don't think giving her unhealable really does much, to be honest. Um I'm actually curious if they bring up the fact that they nerfed her already. A uh, silver blade airmenter was designed to be a hero that could lead your team to victory thanks to the advantages granted her. Or she granted her team through the debuff, stun, and burn, which could be inflicted on the enemy via meteor fall. However, the utility of the skill has been reduced due to the number of heroes who can now remove debuff effects. Okay, so you guys made her weaker. Okay, with this upcoming change, the debuff unhealable will be added, allowing her to effectively respond to heroes with healing effects. Um, most healers that are going to be fighting her are going to have some kind of cleanse. So... I don't know how well that unhealable is going to do. Most things have immunity, so you still need a strip. Um, sometimes I wonder if they play their own game. This upcoming change will also increase the chance that her stun debuff will be preserved, as unhealable will add another debuff that can be removed instead of the stun. That is true. And she also carries Abyssal. So, this is very true in RTA. Um, it, it cleanses a random thing. I guess that, that kind of makes sense. They just gave her another buff that she could apply that could stop the stun from getting cleansed. Um, I, I wonder if this is to like counteract like 
ML Tywin. Um, and RTA, I think he... Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but... I don't, I don't think he cleanses a random buff, does he? In RTA, I still think it's just one across the board. I, I don't remember. Um, and then, yeah, they added an extra chance to burn. So, yeah, Airmint is nicer now. If you've been sitting debating on building her, I think she's more worth building now than she was before. Um, I think she was very usable before. Like, if you've ever watched YD, he uses her all the time. And he does very well with her. So, now she's just better. Best way to look at it. Okay, um... Wow, so they actually... Oh, they changed this. Attacks all enemies with a scythe. So this is her S3, right? So they just gave it innate 30% defense pin. And then another 30 when she's stealth. So it still does this, but it also but now it does 30% debuff or defense pin when when she's not even stealth. So okay, so they buffed her S2, which is nice. Um they took off the critical hit. I wanna I'm trying to see the changes. Um it gives her 50% CR. So Um, critical hit will also grant a barrier. Okay, so now she gets a barrier regardless. And then 50% CR. That's really good. Wow. And this is after. Um, yeah, here's the cooldown right here. And now this is increasing skill cooldowns by one turn twice. So it's more like Judge Key says. It has to get resisted twice now instead of just once that's good and this is really good uh wow um if you guys been sleeping on ice key say it might be time to build her there's not many strong blue units right that cover the, her kind of role uh i've seen some pretty strong ice key says in the game um i'm sorry i don't know if any of you guys are familiar with zazun but he had a crazy one so yeah uh kisei might be worth building now because she did sit there pretty i wouldn't say she was useless she she was an okay unit but there was really not you know much incentive to go really heavy invested on kisei unless you liked how pretty she was and she's very pretty but you know there, there wasn't much incentive to build her outside of that so why didn't i make this full screen all right so yeah Ice Key Say is looking really nice. I might have to build her now, actually. I'm sitting on quite a few copies. No, actually, mine is six star already. Maybe I'll mola her. I'm sitting on the 100 mola, guys. What do you think? Should I build Key Say? I have a bunch of her imprints in my box. So I can imprint her, self imprint her. I can give her a bunch of mola. Let me know what you guys think. Um, what's the, the reasoning? Uh, like, the reasoning, who cares? She's just better now, right? It's not like she got nerfed before. Okay. Now, Ravi, they gave her a chance to stun. This is her S1, right? Yeah, attacks the enemy with devil edge stacks with 35% chance to stun. Okay, so they just gave Ravi a stun. Sick. That's pretty good. Um, and then here. So now she gains effectiveness. This is her passive, right? 50% free effectiveness for Ravi. That's really good. Um, so yeah, if you've been thinking about building Ravi, I guess that's the trend of this video. These units are just objectively better now and way more viable. They were already pretty good units, but now they're, 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 I wouldn't say they're like, oh my God, this is busted. No, they're, they're looking really nice is the best way to say it. Like, they seem a bit more balanced and like realistic units that you could pick in into all of the uh, quote-unquote OP units that are in the game that people pick all the time. And then we have a buff to Kin, which we haven't seen one of these in a very long time. Um, so basically on his S2, he gained, you know, 50% chance to defense break, um, which is nice. And then they changed his... Uh, Wait, Celestial King. Now, this is the S1. So, he, he got more defense break chance on his S1. He's got 100% defense break chance now on his S2, which is insane. Um, 
Now when he gets bigger, it's it still ignores effect resist. So Ken has a 100% chance to defense break when he has vigor. And you can use vigor at 80 fighting spirit instead of 100 now. And it's got a lower cooldown. With three turns of uptime. Um, they just made Ken better. Uh, he was always good. I don't think there was an issue with Ken. But following the trend of the other units, he's just objectively better now. Um, might be time to start reviving your Kens. Because this is really good. This 100% chance of defense break and ignoring effect resistance. Like, Ken is one of those units that you can build very well. He, he you know, oh, this is 10 Ken gear. So, I think this makes him faster and, like, more consistent. A more reliable defense breaker. This is really nice. And with this change, for any new players out there that are re-rolling, and you just happen to watch this video, pick up Ken. Because this is nuts. He's really good. He was good before. Now now he's really good. Um, the the 80 fighting spirit here, it means he's like... it. He was kind of slow to get ramped up, but... It's going to be a lot... Like, you're going to be able to get your Vigor a lot faster now. Um, yeah, I, I'm... The change is just like, it makes him faster. Um, this one I haven't read yet. So, Spear of Darkness. Um, that's her S3, right? So now... They, they moved to where Soulburn was here. Oh, this is all this. Spear of Darkness, which one is that? Goddess of Ruin is the... I don't... I, like, I haven't looked at Shadow Rose in such a long time, guys. Um, there are no functional changes. Huh? Increases effectiveness cast over two turns. That's nice. I guess. Damage dealt increased. Uh, I don't get it. Is this is her S2? Spear of Darkness? Yeah, I guess. I mean, they just gave her Okay. I don't I don't get it. Like the, the, what who asked for this? <laughs> like Okay, so you could soul burn her S2. Like literally all people use Shadows for is for one shots in hunts. Where you're not going to be soul burning anything. I mean, this is nice for that because you don't have to give her as much effectiveness now. Um, it doesn't tell you how much he gets. But okay, I'm um, sure. They just changed this. Soul burn. Ignore effect resistance. Okay, so... I, I don't know shit about Kitty Clarissa, I'll be honest. I'm guessing this is the strip in the unhealable. Like, if I was to guess. Um, yeah. Reliably reduce the enemy's buffs. So yeah, I was... I know a little bit about the, about the game, I guess. But, um, yeah. So, now she ignores effect resistance. Because everyone needs that shit. Um, they gave General Purgus health scaling. Which is great for the 90% of the community that farms Wyvern. Well, that people that are farming Wyvern 13 are doing with General Purgus as their front line. Congratulations, you'll be able to kill him a little bit faster. So, that's neat. I don't think he's going to be, like, any more viable than in PvP than he is now. I don't think you're going to be building... It depends on how much, like, we, when, how much the scaling is. You might be able to build him more like a bruiser. Maybe. 85% chance to decrease combat readiness. With more damage. Okay, I don't think this is going to make Celeste any more relevant, but that's neat for, like, earlier game players that happen to pull Celeste. Um, if you have CDOM early on in the game and you have Celeste, that comp is very viable for you to push your way up to Challenger. Um, maybe even Champion. Maybe not, because Celeste Cleave, like, she just gets smashed by Charles on defense. So, yeah. And then they changed his cleanse artifact to cleanse before he attacks instead of after, which is how it should have been the entire time. But, um, sick. Good changes. Um, going back up to the top here. 
The only ones that really matter here, I believe, are the top four. And uh, Kitty Clarissa's change is really nice for anyone that uses her for RTA. She might be a little bit more worth using now as a strip. Um, she's a, She comes with that dual attack shit. It's going to have great synergy with Silver Blade Araminta here, right, actually. So... Kitty Clarissa may be a little bit more worth building now if you were hesitant in building her before, now that she has a guaranteed strip. Um, the Soul Burn, that's nice. You can build a really high ER, she's good for that too. And then all of the five stars just look better. Um, so you have more options to play around with with your Mola. If you already have a Kisei that's plus 15 that you used to do Wyvern with, uh, my, my, might be time to dust her back off. I know there's a lot of people out there with invested ravies and invested kins might be time to dust those back off araminta i'm sure a lot of people recalled her when she got nerfed the first time do i think it's worth putting a bunch of molas into her now um not really to be honest she's very functional with no mola still unless it makes her gain more cr which i'm not we can go check that now let's just go look at her i have araminta built this video is going a little bit longer than I wanted to, but that's okay. Here she is. Skill enhances. Damage dealt. Um, effect chance here, so that might be worth picking up. But it looks like she's just going to have 60% chance to burn. I don't know if they're going to change this. And this already has max chance to stun. So you could go here for the effect chance. Very low investment unit. Because she does damage with her burns. Right? She's not gaining more CR here, so it's not necessary. Um, realistically, you could get the three here from Friendship and then throw another three molas here and it only costs you three molas to make Araminta more consistent. I mean, 10% extra sh chance. If it's not 100%, it's fucking zero. We all know that. But, you know, here's her stats with, you know, my crappy gear. But, um, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up, guys. I don't want to drag this on any longer. Um, good balance changes overall. Again, if you enjoyed this, um, do me a favor, hit that like button. And again, if you're new, hit that sub button. If you made it this far in the video, you're probably a sub already. But if you're not a sub, now you got to hit the sub button. Because only, only my subs are allowed to watch my entire video. So that means you have to sub now. Just saying. All right. So you guys have a good one. Peace.